Yeah. Because we going to the fucking roof. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I don't, I don't like to toot our own horn, yeah. but we some other things. Came at 7 Step in the room, I'm an elephant. Run up a bag, I ran up a bag. I gotta go count on some presidents. I'm back out the dirt, the sediment. Back with a baddie, she elegant. I'm back from the dead, I'm back from the dead. Bitch, they call me the revenant. <laughs> Welcome to Combine Academy, the home of the GOAT. Welcome to Warm Ups. Um, let me kick this episode off by saying for those that are watching, um, you know, we're still early in our season, but please continue to su subscribe, like, comment, leave comments for us so that we know um, how you guys are feeling after each of these episodes. Uh, we enjoy sharing these stories with you guys. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being the core of our community. Uh, and we, we love you guys and we're excited to keep growing alongside of you. Um, if you're new to the Warm Ups family, welcome as well. I'm Alex. That's Isaiah. And for some background in this show, we discuss the business of professional athletes uh, outside of sports. Um, you'll get a peek at the personal and professional journeys of our guests. And uh, you'll be a part of some of these. I, we'll, we'll generate new ideas on this show. You'll be a part of those uh, and a lot more. Now, this is this is the episode I'm super excited about. Um, I think we kind of been talking about this for a while, but we're finally, finally getting it done. Uh, two guys I know personally um, and professionally. Um, Nine-year NBA vet. Eight. I'll Eight. take nine. <laughs> Eight-year NBA vet. Yep. Um, serial entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. uh, real estate investor. Mm -hmm. Tech investor. Mm -hmm. uh, my fellow country South Carolina boy. You already uh, know. Trevor Booker. Yep, yep. Uh, thank you for being here, bro. Yep. Um, and we have his partner, business partner, business titan. Uh, <laughs> you know, man of a lot of different things in business. You know, he's crushed it. Uh, his white hand man, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Jonah Thanks. Bays. Jonah Bays. Thank you for Appreciate being here too, brother. It. Thank you for having me. Uh, welcome to Warm Ups. Yep. Um, I guess we can kind of kick it off and talk about one of your guys' biggest endeavors, um, Combine. Come on in, come on in. Welcome to our crib. <laughs> Welcome to Combine Academy, the home of the goats. So yeah, so Combine is a um, international boarding school uh, dedicated to uh, basically blending athletics and academics. We've got student athletes from over 40 different countries, all 50 of the United States. From Aruba, Puerto Rico. From Puerto Rico, Costa Rica. Trinidad and Tobago. From Romania. From Puerto Rico too. Um, yeah, it's a boutique level IMG Academy uh, that, you know, is uh, scaling and growing. Um, actually, a few things we got to mention about Combine. So, yeah, so we have four sports at Combine. The unique thing about it is that our basketball team, our high school basketball team, our national high school basketball team is ranked 13th in, in the country. We've got, you know, a few different five-star, uh, you know, players on that team. And uh, we're back-to-back -back state champions two years in a row for our basketball division. Well, let's start where it all started. 2013. Tell and, uh, how we came up with it. You know, the yeah. late nights in the in the little house that we were renting. Yeah. Not little, but it was old. Yeah. But yeah, it, was, exactly. it was pretty dope. Yep. This exactly. was the off season for you? Yes, yeah, the off season yeah. for okay. me. Like, okay. like <laughs> I think I had just came. No. So he had came up to my campus and he was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Like, so he needed money and stuff. And I was like, he didn't have nowhere to stay. I said, bro, come stay with me for the summer. So I was renting this uh, this house out in Charlotte, um, and we just you know we stayed up late nights just thinking of you know what we can do. we can do together. Yeah, things we can do together. So he had uh, experience you know helping his mentor run uh, ABI American Basketball Institute. Mm -hmm. So and we had my image, my likeness. So we were like, 
let's start our own basketball. Um, let's let's start our own ABI, basically. Yeah, and that's an off season training or like a training program. Yeah, that's what it started it's not off a school. as. ABI is not a school. It was a uh, it was like a post grad institute. So that was okay. a uh, the way in which we coined that whenever we had the American Basketball Institute, and it was basically for fifth year guys that that finished high school and are looking for an opportunity. So. Okay. ABI, we started, um, you know, we ran it for two years and we sold it. And then I went to Clemson and then we said, okay, let's restart this. But never really knew how big it was going to get with Combine. Because we started, I, as soon as Book said, hey, come stay with me in the summer. He was on a three-month lease in a, in a nice house in South Park of Charlotte, just basically mm -hmm. somewhere for his family to live in the off season. Said, hey, man, come live with me. You know, we'll figure it out. You can train me. And I just did all the pro training and all that stuff I had mm -hmm. familiarity with, produce some income. But meanwhile, him and I and his brother, Darian, were really just developing this new business idea in, uh, in Combine Academy. And we were throwing, you know, hundreds of names around trying to coin this, yeah. you know, this, this new institution. We knew it could be big. And, uh, and we came up with the name Combine. So it was how uh, we came up with it was we were just thinking Jonah, he had access to this email list of kids from uh, that he still had from uh, ABI. Yeah. And a big shout out to the, uh, the late great. Uh, John Jordan yep. because he taught Jonah some major shit. Like yeah. Jonah, those two years, like he learned a lot of shit, and that's yep. that's helped us, you know, with with Combine Academy. But he had uh, access to this email list, and so and most of them were international kids. You know, mm -hmm. they want to come over here and get exposure. So he would, you know, just send out mass emails to those kids, and we came up with the name because you know they're international, weird, domestic. So we're trying to combine the two. So right. Combine Academy, that's how we came up with it. Yeah. And it was pretty dope, you know. That's um, the first time I heard that. Yeah. yeah. I thought, I'm not going to tell you what I thought Combine was. I yeah. thought it was like the physical Combine. Yeah, yeah. Like, that is well, what most though. people do. Okay. Yeah. okay. That has yeah. that yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. 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 we do. It's like, a double, it's like yeah. a double entendre. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like it. It's exactly. combining all the different cultures and countries and then also the Combine measurements, which is... The analytics is is what our sports performance department lives by. Every right. time kids come in, you know, we test their wingspan, their height, their hand size, vertical leap, you know, standing reach, all that stuff that you see at the pro level. Yeah, so yeah. we're really trying to treat them like uh, super high level athletes. Yeah, so. that's, that's what I was going to ask is like, what's your one liner for what combine is? Like, what's that yeah. elevator pitch look like? Yeah. Um, because a lot of people are probably familiar with like the essence of like that environment, yep. but like to you guys, when you were sitting in, you know, the garage per se, coming up with what this business idea looks like um, and then what it, what it's become today, has that always been consistent? Has it changed? Like give us, give us the, the 411 on what combine yeah. is. It's changed astronomically, but um, you know, from the beginning, cause we had no clue some of the things that we were going to get into and the different businesses and how it was going to develop and scale and grow. But, uh, you know, now the elevator pitch is, you know, are you familiar with IMG Academy? Most folks are. We're a boutique style IMG Academy. We've got four sports, um, basketball, baseball, soccer and golf. And we're an international sports boarding school that's fully academically nationally accredited, um, NCAA approved, registered with our state and approved for uh, CVIS I-20 status. Uh, but we're also kind of a sports and education conglomerate. We've bought several different brands, um, especially in uh, digital media, scouting, tournament operations, scholastic events. So we're, we're pretty much doing everything in youth sports uh, with this international boarding school. And it's uh, to eliminate the seasonality. Uh, we have all those different brands that operate during the summer whenever our young men aren't in school. So, yeah. but it didn't always start that way. That's what I was going to yeah. ask. What did, what did it look like in this infancy stage? Like <laughs> Jonah, could, Jonah could tell you more <clears throat> because he was in the, the trenches. He was in the trenches. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was strictly training uh, okay. when it first started off. So we, we started the, we started combine with a $2,000 investment and that was just for a website. Wow. See, Jonah had the secret sauce. We had to make, um, we had to make the kids pay before they came over, that way they could, you know, pay for the housing that they were going to stay in, oh. the food, the transportation, you know, all of that good stuff. So they're internationals? Yeah. International kids? Primarily. Yeah. So right now on our campus, so it's it's grown and it's blown up to, you know, almost 60 acres, over 100,000 square feet, students from over 40 different countries and nearly all 50 states. But when it started in its first year, 
we started out of that house that Trevor was living in because while, you know, we created this brand and we're like, okay, where are we going to house these young men? So we started selling mass email marketing, calling, mm-hmm. hiring coaches to, you know, get out there and, and recruit. And we recruited a great roster, 12 students in the first year. 10 of them were from different countries to domestic. And uh, we needed them to pay those prepayments, those deposits, so that we could then go and get our housing and our gym and all that. And that website investment that Trevor referred to is what we were able to market to the young men. We knew what gym we wanted. That's crazy. We didn't know what housing we were going to (laughs) have. We knew what kind of van we wanted, but we didn't have any of it. So we just pulled some Google pics and you know, this almost is what we envisioned it market, being. <laughs> yeah, marketed it into fruition to an extent. Deposits came in, several kids paid up front. You know, those young men I think had the best customer experience we've ever had because yeah. I'm coming straight from the college level. I was their chef, head coach, sports performance director, their driver, their RA. And That's so, so I crazy. was able to impact them. Um, so that was an amazing year. But basically where we found ourselves was we got, you know, about 60 grand in the bank account and deposits. Then we went out, we got our gym, we went out, we got our van, our uniforms, all the different things that we needed, but we didn't have housing. So book said, Hey, what about this house? We're in a 4,000 square foot house. Why don't you go to the landlord that rented for three months and just say, Hey man, do you want to keep this show going? Um, So I went to him, negotiated a lease to extend it for six months. At that time, our tenure was six months. Um, He bought uh, into it. We brought those 12 kids. They lived right there. I lived with them. And uh, that was our house. You know? I forgot I forgot a major part. We had another partner in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Know, Johnny, you want to talk about it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think we should leave that out, you know, as far as like, you know. We all got to go into detail. Yeah. Just but, because. You know, just um, talk about the other partner. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Just talk about the other partner. The other partner, yeah. So we had a we had a, a guy on board. It was board. a great business lesson, though. Yeah, yeah. taught us a great yeah. lesson. Um, yeah. My father sat us down. He saw it from jump and said, "Hey, you should not do dealings, you know, with said individual." Um, but we needed that labor, and uh, and he was a grinder. And so he um, was in the trenches with you. He was. He was okay. an older gentleman. Um, he really helped out with the initial, mm-hmm. you know, incubation of everything, the operations. He was uh, bringing a lot of sweat equity to the table. And so, you know, looking back on it, you know, we had our conflict and this and that, but looking back on it, you know, I got to like show gratitude for him grinding it out, but then he got very, very manipulative, you know, shady yeah. and uh, and we had to get him out. So that was like the time at which we like ha- hired our counsel, which it was a big ass headache. You know, it was a huge yeah. headache. Yeah. Headache. And, and I, f- I feel like there's parallels to that, even though, so it's good to hear that he was like grinding and, and supporting you guys and, you know, putting in the elbow, he had the elbow grease, but you see this with normal entrepreneurs, let alone athlete entrepreneurs, like I call it like emotional support partners, right? Because we feel like, all right, I need somebody to go in uh, and do the work with me. And so I'm going to bring somebody along with me that, you know, can help with X, Y, and Z. And you just paint it up in your, in your brain. But then when you actually go to execute it, you're still pulling all the weight, right? You're still doing all the work. And that's why I call them, you know, emotional support partners because you end up getting to your wits end at a certain point down the road where shit is just so complicated now because it's like, okay, well, this person's been a part of it and he technically has a a claim to fame here as part being part of this business and putting in this work. Um, But how much did he actually do? Like I've been doing 90% of this work. This guy's doing 10 and we've got the same cut. Like it just creates animosity yeah. and it's super common with literally anyone in business. Right. He was, um, he was, a, he was a, a pretty good worker. It was just some of the things that he did, you know, behind the scenes right. that led us to, you know, want to part ways with him. But we learned, you know, a, a valuable, uh, huge lesson, you know, in the whole thing. We just, you got to watch who you partner with and give equity to. And the reason why we gave him equity is because, you know, I'm, a, I'm I'm an NBA player, but I was I was still cheap and, and frugal, right. and I didn't put any money into the company besides that website, and you know that was his way of getting paid. You mm-hmm. know, we 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 showed him our vision, the bigger picture. We didn't know the vision was going to get this big, but you know we we sold him on the dream, and you know sold him to come on board for some sweat equity, and that was his way of you know of, of getting paid because he had his own thing going on back in South Carolina too. Well, he had a little bit of money coming in, so he didn't need the uh, the the monthly cash flow. Yeah, 
Um, you have to pay him a salary or anything. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so we gave him some of that sweat equity. And you can't always just give away equity. Right? No, and yeah, and, yeah Book makes a, a great point. And that's, you know, what we see is a lot of young guys, they're always eager to join forces with someone and sign docs and, and bring someone on board, especially if they don't have to contribute any money. Right. These pro athletes, you know, a lot of times they'll sign on a partnership agreement, an operating agreement with another individual if they don't have to invest dollars and they'll get on a tax return with them and have K-1s. And, and that, that puts you at a huge position of exposure. Everybody wants to create an entity real quick. Let's file mm -hmm. our LLC and let's do this. You really need to bring things to market and bring things to fruition and find the trust before you start executing docs with folks, especially right. if you're a notable NBA player or a person with some wealth. So, um, so we learned that lesson, you know, yeah. because we we executed those docs within a few days, and we didn't realize that getting out of the docs was going to be such a big headache, a legal expense, and uh, and that basically, you know, we were joined to them. It, it's like a divorce, you know, right. at that point. And so. it gets complicated. Like where I have a ton of respect for you guys is the hustle like there's there's hard work and then there's hustle right hustle is being strategic putting your ass under or the fire under your ass right where there's some risk there that's involved but you started this thing for two thousand right. dollars like if there was to be more investment from said partner anybody for that matter and like then you go down the line guess what we just put tens of thousands of dollars into this, it's even more complicated to potentially get out of. Like you need to validate that there's a, even, you know, a place for this in the market. The fact that you, you were wearing these multiple hats, right? I'm the driver, I'm the chef, I'm all these different things to all these people. The modern athlete, especially with some of these guaranteed contracts, oh, I'll just pay somebody to do all that. Like, no, like you need to be in the trenches. You need to see this from the ground level, mm -hmm. which it sounds like you had pretty well exposure to how how did that even work like when you were in season and stuff like how are you staying connected to the business and see i'm i mean jonah kept me connected but i'm one of those those athletes that you were just talking about where you know i put everything on him mm -hmm. because my focus is on basketball and it has to be ball first that's yeah. what you get your generation so, so jonah like he said he was the, the the coach the trainer the chef the driver um the swim teacher. I mean, everything. He was everything. <laughs> you were teaching guys how to swim? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, oh, yeah. Okay. We, had a, we, had a, we had a pool there, and I didn't want any, you know, that's a liability. No yeah. gate around it. He, so, was, all, he yeah. was also the lifeguard when they were swimming. <laughs> yeah, 100%, man. Nah, was, but, but kudos to Jonah because he was, yeah. the, he was the engine of everything, you know? He did everything. I'm, I'm playing ball. I mean, of course, he updated me on everything, but my main focus is basketball. Yeah. So he, he's working his butt off, and you know, he just allowed me to focus on my craft and, and bust his butt. Right. Yeah. The great thing about T-Book was that, you know, we had we were best friends and yeah. we started in college when we didn't have a pot to piss in. So we built that trust. And, mm -hmm. you know, he was, uh, you know, when I pick when I call him, it wasn't like, oh, my financial guy is calling or my accountant's calling. I don't want to deal with this. You know, I want to just keep yeah. it lax. We could get on the phone and chop it up relatably tell them funny stories about what's going on in the business, tell them where we're struggling, tell them where we're doing well. So he was always available, even, you know, even while juggling such a, a successful career. And yeah. it's not always like that, you know? No. Yeah, I, I, I kind of wanted to explore that a little bit because, you know, a lot of athletes have homies, friends that they, you know, want to put on or kind of handle that piece of their business. I guess this is a, a two-part question. First one for you, uh, Trevor. What did you see in Jonah, Jonah early on that said, okay, I'm comfortable. No, beyond him just being a friend mm -hmm. or a best friend, I'm comfortable with him leading the business. Um, I think it was a couple of things. You know, like you said, he was my best friend. Mm -hmm. um, so I really, you know, knew him and knew I could trust him. And, you know, he, he I saw how he busted his ass all the time. Right. You know, even in college, we were entrepreneurs. I didn't even realize it. You know, I was just, I just called it hustling. Yeah, but we had girlfriends in college, um, but we had a, a free apartment on campus that you know the school gave us. So what we did, we we rented out our apartments. <laughs> we were roommates, so we rented out our apartments to uh, two other guys, and we went and moved in with our girlfriends. <laughs> yeah, to get some money in our pockets. <laughs> so, True hustlers. Man. Yeah, we yeah we, we started you know in college, and you know 
I didn't really look at it as a business. I just looked at it as, you know, putting money in my pocket. Um, but that's when everything started, you know. And Did y'all have those conversations in college about, you know, if this is what we want to do if or if or um, when you make it to the NBA? Nah, not you know, really. It's it just living, being a college student. Yeah, we were student. just yeah. being a college student, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, hanging from the rooftops and what I had a sombrero on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I got I got Jonah suspended a couple times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had some some great times in college, but yeah. we never talked about you know shout entrepreneurship. Out University. Big shout out, big <laughs> shout out. Um, but yeah, we never you know really had those conversations until mm-hmm. you know after after I got drafted, we, yeah. we we started to grow up and see things differently. In certain circumstances, I guess make you think about things a little bit more, especially with him. You know, getting his his offer, you know, retracted. Um, me being on basically a, a year to year contract in the NBA. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know if you know I was. Sometimes I would play. Sometimes I wouldn't. So I'm like, you know, I gotta save my money. I gotta figure out, you know, some other things I can do to to right. produce some income. Um, I had some you know good veterans at the time on the Wizards, um, and they they were into business. Uh, Al Harrington, you know, Trevor Ariza. Yeah. Uh, those guys. So I used to always hear them, you know, talk about business. So, you know, me as a young fella, I want to, I want to hang with the cool kids. You know, they got business. I want to start me a business too, so I can go hang with them and talk about my business. Yeah. Um. So just being around, you know, conversations like that, it, it leads you into, you know, uh, some good spaces. Yeah. And so that that's when, you know, we started, you know, thinking on a on a different level. And then once we got into it, it, it really, you know, propelled. Yeah. So Combine was that first, that first endeavor that you guys did together. Yeah. Yep. Um so what's let's I kinda let's go back to Combine a little bit. What's next for Combine? Like, you know, where where you got what's the plan uh, to take it even, you know, further next level? Yeah. Well, um because you guys just dropped some big news. Yeah. 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 So we um so we we built this thing up to with Bookset with the two thousand dollar investment that allowed for you know us to take it all the way to a multi sport institution. Um, it put us onto real estate, you know, and, and gaining you know the the knowledge to start acquiring property and acquiring student housing and building a team around our real estate companies and our development companies. But you know, with that said, we've also um, jumped in. We, we acquired a, a company by the name of Phenom Hoop Report, a very successful uh, multi-million dollar company here in the Carolinas. They lead scouting and, and tournament get, uh, tournament uh, operations and events. Um, they're the, uh, the, the leading platform for um, college placement and scholastic events in all of the Carolinas. And um, so with that said, and we bought the Hoop State Network, which we brought on board a media and production See. company. And um, and so, you know, we've seen these things scale and what it's done is it's attracted some outside investors. And so um, one of our latest uh, deal closings, which happened actually just yesterday, was a, uh, a prominent investor and entrepreneur out of Daytona Beach by the name of Mike Panaggio that un- uh, runs a huge uh, digital marketing, media and manufacturing operation down there. Um, unbelievable mentor, friend, uh, and uh, successful business person and philanthropist that uh, just invested in our company and uh, you know took a significant ownership stake and is going to be partnering with us on a lot of upcoming different things. So we're uh, we're launching uh, a couple of different softwares. Uh, can't really release a lot about the information because we've got some protected IP, but those are launching uh, January 1st of, of 2023. And those are going to be really big and rival some of the sports youth softwares and databases that you see out here. Um, and we also have a, a $12 million campus expansion and development that we're in the process of unveiling and um, you know executing the uh, the site plan for, which includes a, a four court, you know, multiplex uh, sports center, um, tennis courts, two new dormitories, and uh, just a wealth of of different uh, uh, different assets that we're adding to our campus. So dope. And so you started talking about a company that you acquired. You guys also have a very vast portfolio of companies that you've invested in. Um, give us a little bit of background on your uh, portfolio from J.B. Fitzgerald, your venture capital group. Um, I want to know everything from how 
that start like how how do you even launch a venture cap like like why did you guys do it how did you guys do it um where's that at today what's your favorite investment like these are the, some of the things rattling around in my head that i'd love to get some yeah, that's background. a lot of questions <laughs> <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go one at a time okay one at a time yeah so yeah like how did you guys how or why did you guys start uh jb fitzgerald yeah um I think the biggest reason that we started JB Fitzgerald is once we got into that business space, we were great at networking. Um, and it, it's crazy how early on, you know, when you want to, you're trying to find different companies to invest in, you know, you're searching and you're searching and you're searching. You go out searching, uh, you know, for the for for different deals. But once you really get into that space and people start to, you know, recognize that you that you got some shit with you, that you really know what you're doing, the deals just come out of the sky. You know, you don't have to go searching anymore. People come find you. Um, so that's pretty much, you know, what happened. We had a, a lot of deal flow come our way. So we, we had a lot of access to um, different people and different deals coming across our desk. Um, and we so we decided, you know, why not start a fund? And, you know, and, and get some other people in on deals and let's just see what this thing can take us. So you, it was a formalized, or it was like formalizing all of the just like, because I've, I've heard stories about athletes getting pitched in bars, like <laughs> yeah. literally at, <laughs> does anyone eat at Applebee's anymore? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite investment that you guys have made to date? Well, it may be different, but mine is probably, it's probably Hoop. H U U P E. Yeah, it's like kind of like Peloton style, like at home, goal. advanced. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a artificial intelligent uh, basketball goal. So you can shoot on it and it tracks your score, uh, tracks you know how many shots you make and all of that. It's also a TV, so you can watch the finals while it's going on and actually shoot on it. And they still track your score. So if you see a, a move that Giannis is doing during the finals, you know, you can watch it right there and you can, you know, try to practice this, that same move. It, it's kind of cool. But the biggest thing I like about it is it allows you to play against anybody in the world if they have a hoop. So say I'm, you know, in the backyard playing on my hoop, I can, you know, I can challenge a buddy from China on the, on the same goal if they got one, you know, challenge them to a shooting contest. Um, I think it's gonna it's gonna change the game and it's gonna bring a lot of people together, I think. That's sick. Super dope. Yeah. Shout out to Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. CEO, Paul and founder, yeah. CEO of, yeah. of who Absolutely. Paul's a good dude. What about yeah. you? What's your favorite investment? It's probably twofold. Um, I love the DC United, you know, ownership. A guy that really, really a great player from the University of Florida that went on to play in the NBA, Matt Walsh. Uh, him and I trained together in Las Vegas and he reconnected with me and DM'd me on Twitter and said, hey, I've got a great opportunity with my former agent to own an MLS team. And, uh, you know, I immediately, you know, contacted Book and we talked about it and we met, met up with him and learned more about it. And one of the things that really attracted us to the DC United investment was the fact that, you know, the managing partner and majority owner was uh, by the name of Jason Levin and he used to control and own the Memphis Grizzlies. And so, you know, he had that great NBA ownership. He'd done it at a high level, um, you know, really, uh, you know, uh, very, very ambitious and charismatic entrepreneur and sports business leader. And so being able to kind of, uh, you know, mentor under him and, and learn about the business from a former NBA owner now, controlling owner of DC United was, was awesome and valuable education. And it's unlocked a lot of different resources, a lot of other deal flow, because now, we're rubbing shoulders with, you know, owners of sports teams from some of the other teams and some of the other divisions. And it's uh, it's unique. There was a, a lot of uh, a lot of value there outside of just return on capital. We actually tried to put a group together to buy the Timberwolves. Yeah, we had a group together, but it ended up falling apart. But we got our feet wet with that. And it was pretty dope to see, you know, and go through that process. Yeah. We had uh, Kevin Garnett on board and a couple of other guys. It was it was pretty fun. Are you gonna tap LeBron? Try to get in on that Vegas deal? Um, uh, probably not. Um, I would I would love to, uh, but we got to see where we are. You know, right in the big at, picture at, at the time. Yeah. Shout out to KG though. Well, he said exact same way as a business oh person my. on the court. Oh Imagine my. How, how he used to talk shit on the court. 
That's in like, business. Yeah, he's oh, did that same God. energy <laughs> on the phone. I love it. So you guys can put in a good word if we want to go tap him for a warm ups episode. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be a little difficult, but we can we can put in a word. Well, cool. we can play some horse on a hoop at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Now let's let's switch gears a little bit, and you just mentioned you know real estate has been a primary focus of you guys right now. Um, let's kind of like talk about how that started and, you know, where do you guys, where you at now and kind of where you see going with the, with your real estate portfolio. Jonah can, you can start on like how it started. Yeah. He, he pretty and he, much and he got told us. me, he told me about your patented millionaire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so give, give me that, give me that so we don't leave it off. off got the, you. Got you. Yeah. That's just, that's one thing that, you know, I think, uh, I've just been super passionate about teaching young guys uh, this this little hack that can turn into multiple million dollars in net worth. But basically, you know, real estate is is our biggest primary business. Uh, we have several different divisions. We own hundreds of properties, nearly three hundred different properties, um, and growing, you know, every month. But um, once we saw that, we realized, okay, you know, how is this getting done? And the way in which all of it is getting done is by leverage, of course, and debt, using other people's money and partnering with great banks uh, that, you know, give you this leverage to buy these assets. And so um, the best debt that you can get from a real estate perspective is primary residence debt. You know, it's uh, basically getting a 30 year fixed loan to buy your primary home that you live in. And it's the lowest rate that you can basically get Fannie and Freddie rate. So, you know, it's just three and five percent. Well, just seven months ago, it was about two and a half percent, which is absolutely insane. And that is fixed, gentlemen, for 30 years. So, yeah. you know, when you go to get a commercial loan or you go to get an investment loan, typically, you know, you'll have a fixed rate for maybe 20 years, a lot of times 15 to 25 years. Um, and the rate is going to be double or triple what you would get for a primary occupancy loan. Mm -hmm. And you're going to put down 20% for that investment loan. But for a primary residence loan, you can put down 3.5% to 5%, get a rate locked for 30 years, and it'll be the lowest rate that you can ever get. No, not even Morgan Stanley, none of these, none right. of these big hedge funds and private equity groups can get a, a rate that low whenever they buy you know, property in bulk. So, you know, what I've told some of our young guys, a lot of our staff, you know, we employ nearly 100 people just on our Combine Academy campus. We employ throughout our whole portfolio over 200 people. And then we have 200 students on campus. So we, we, we want to impact a lot of these young guys. And what we tell them is that best debt is so attainable, even for someone making $40,000 a year. So, you know, let's say you finish school and you don't end up doing exactly what you expected and you jump into becoming a PE teacher and you make $45,000 a year, you can immediately at the age of 22 or whenever you finish, buy your first home with three and a half percent down. You could buy a $200,000 property, $300,000 property for $10,000 or less. And you can save that money up through the course of, you know, from now until the course of, of which you buy that. And that gets you into a 30 year fixed rate that doesn't change. The economy can crash the economy can soar, you know, anything can happen and that rate stays the same. You buy that property, you live in that home and what the bank will allow you to do and the government allows you to do is buy up to four units. So you could buy a quadplex, live in one of the units, buy it for three and a half percent down, live in one of the units, rent the other three, basically live there for free and cash flow monthly. Tenants are paying down your debt. The uh, value of the property is most likely going up and uh, now you own four units. Just 10 months later, you can start planning to buy your next one because you only have to live there for 12 months. Oh, then you can go buy your next one. It's a year? Just a year. Exactly. So, so start that early. Start that in the seventh or eighth month, getting your finances in order, getting your little nest egg, your little 10 grand, go buy you another one. Most people think, oh, I need to sell the first one in order to buy the next one. Absolutely not. You don't have to because they worry about having that debt on their report. Well, the bank says, Okay, uh, do you service that debt? No, it's offset. Send the bank the leases to the property. Send them a lease for the fourth unit that you live in of someone that's going to rent it You know, here shortly. And they'll say, oh, well, you actually are making income on this, right? Offsets the debt, you're making income. Then they'll approve you for your next one. Now maybe you go buy a duplex or a single family home. Keep buying one to four units every year. Now what's the hassle? You got to move, right? right? But if you're young and mobile and vigilant, who cares? Who cares? Right. You're making so much goddamn money, you could pay two grand to movers yeah. to just move you right into your next home. But let's say you did that and you bought an average of two units 
every year for 10 years, by the time you're almost 30 years old, you're going to own like 20 properties with the best debt that anybody can even imagine that's going to stay the exact same. As the rent goes up and as you know the property value goes up, your debt payment stays the same. So your cash flow becomes even wider and bigger every single month. And then I just tell guys like around year four, year five, but it depends on the market, go back and analyze your first year quad or duplex or single family home. And you're going to have that equity because tenants have been paying down the rent, you know, for four or five years, value has gone up for four or five years, refinance that or grab a HELOC, uh, a home equity line of credit, pull that 50, 60 grand out, use that for a 20% down payment on your commercial portfolio and then run that. And so it's an easy way for anyone with no sophistication, no great IQ, intelligence, or even drive to get to a multi-million dollar status. And so uh, one of our most profound executive assistants, a brilliant young guy, Alex Stewart, um, he's one of he's one of those guys that I put this on to. He's already bought two properties. He's 23 years old. I if I could bet and I could, you know, hedge this in Vegas. I'd, I'd bet it all on the fact that he'll be worth about $5 million by the time he's 30, just off this, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, I just want folks to hear it and understand it and do it, you know, cause it's a, it's an easy way to become a millionaire without doing much. Aside, aside from Jonah's passion, <laughs> this is what I like. This is my favorite, least favorite part of warmups because it makes me want to like hire a camera squad to follow these guys around <laughs> not like flies on the wall just like documentary style yeah. and just absorb all of this value whether you like just out the instruction would be stay out of their way do your best to capture all of this stuff <laughs> definitely get kevin garnett calls on your on uh, on your film and and go to town because yeah. now we've actually thought about you know having a, a camera crew you know following us around and and putting together you know just just save some footage, you know, for right. possibly a documentary. Yeah. Because we're going to the fucking roof. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I don't, I don't like to toot our own horn. Yeah. But we some motherfuckers. <laughs> 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 no, like for real. Like, like some people think they do it, but yeah. we really do it. Man, I mean, like I can tell also... we're sitting in Jonah's beautiful home. <laughs> I didn't see a hoop outside, no. It's out there. Oh, it is? Oh, not a, oh, no, no, they're not, they're not here yet. They're not manufactured yet. Okay, cool. But it's in the process. I saw some, I saw some, some flexing ass player shit on Jonah's Instagram one day. Uh, I think it was, it wasn't that long ago. It was like, we just, we acquired 90 units in the last 60 days or something crazy like that. 60 units in the last 30 days. It was something crazy like that. And I'm like, yo. A lot of people talk about the Mm -hmm. shit that they're doing, Mm -hmm. but these guys are doing it. In closings every week, like yeah. it's 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 imp- it, for me. It's motivating, you know, because I've known you guys for a while now. It's like, damn, I gotta I gotta get on my game even more. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's it's, it's competitive. Like I, yeah. I love to see you guys doing it, but yeah. you guys are really doing some good shit, man. Mm-hmm. Big shit. So, yeah. is yeah. the millionaire yeah. hack where you start? Like, if I'm like, oh, real estate sounds dope, and you know this, like that's like one of the primary things I feel like you're fed as a professional athlete in like the league and team sanctioned mm-hmm. seminars and and whatnot. So, like, and you're given your guys' perspective and experience now, like, how how do you get started in real estate? Well, we still got to talk about how we got started. Oh, yeah, we and, got and, into and, that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so Jonah can start with that um, because it it all centered around combine. Yeah. So Jonah, you can get into it since yeah. he was like really in the trenches and yeah. you know it was really his idea. So real estate yeah. spawned off yeah. from Combine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, spawned from Combine. We had a special opportunity with Combine um, where basically, you know, we in our first year, we were recruiting all those young men. We brought those 12 guys in, unbelievable kids, uh, close to two hundred thousand dollars in in revenue. And we realized, okay, we were just renting this house from from this individual. I think we paid him about 15 grand over six months. Mm-hmm. Um, and we enticed him by saying, okay, we'll pay half up front um, with those prepaid tuitions. So we yeah. had that cheese to be able to negotiate. <laughs> so uh, so we did that. Um, and we saw, okay, well, we just paid this guy, you know, 15 grand in six months. You know, year two, we tripled our enrollment because we had that great demand. Now we had a brand, you know, year one, we recruited all those kids within like 60 days. I mean, wow. it was uh, some, some 20 hour days I would be walking around that pool, just, you know, on calls nonstop trying to get, you know, get this thing to be successful. So year two, we did the same thing. We had more of a team. So we tripled our enrollment. We had about 40 students 
year two. And we said, okay, now we kind of got a little bit of a housing issue where we were partnered with two different apartment complexes. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, you know, about 18 apartments that we were, you know, getting into. And that was, uh, you know, 2014. And then we started to pre-enroll for the following year. And we saw that we were almost tripling our enrollment for the following year. So we were at about 100 students in our third year. And uh, an individual came to me and said, you know, you really don't need to be paying, you know, all this equity down for other landlords, other investors. And at this point, you know, I didn't own not one property, never had owned a property, didn't have any idea how to own a, or buy right. a property. When we think about real estate. Exactly. Yeah. Trevor owned a property. It was just his primary home. And mm-hmm. he was advised by a real estate agent and just, you know, grabbed something, um, you know, for him and his family to live in. But that was the only property amongst him and I and our entire families is wow. his one, you know, primary residence. And someone said, hey, you know, you're just paying down, you know, these apartment complexes because we were on pace to have about 50 apartments at Matthews Reserve and another apartment complex. And someone told me, man, you need to get into ownership and you need to, you know, it's going to help you seasonally and this and that and the other. And so basically we bought our first multifamily property in 2014. And what we saw then was that, okay, now we can stage it. You know, we can have it the way that we need it to be. We don't have noise complaints and transportation Mm -hmm. issues. Um, parents that want to see exactly where their son is living can see that they can come on visits. We can walk them into the actual room where they're living, where we couldn't do that if we were renting something in the future right. and the, the lease starts in the future. So it really changed the game for us to, to see that like we've got this now, then in the off season, we can run off season programs, bring in teams from overseas, players from all around the United States. And we have housing for them. We have pre-draft housing. Mm-hmm. We've got, you know, pro and college player housing year round. So we saw what that did, but what we also saw was, after the first year of owning that multifamily property, we built a bunch of equity because we were paying down our mortgage as opposed to someone else's and the value went up. And so we said, we need to rinse and repeat, take some of this cash flow we're generating from our company and buy more. And, uh, you know, we just got on a uh, rinse and repeat cycle and started buying up all different types of asset classes in an area of Charlotte that has now become very affluent called Matthews, uh, buying up houses, multifamily properties, condominiums, hotels, and, uh, and it allowed for us to house all of our kids. So at one point, we had about 150 students living all over the town of Matthews, <laughs> different homes. And our gym was in one place. Our, our office was in the other, our weight room in another. And we had vans branded as combine and buses going to each of the housings oh and picking these kids up. <laughs> Kind of a logistical nightmare. Yeah, um, I can imagine. But uh, but we the neighbors would you know be upset because we have these kids coming out of these houses, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah, and kids would be outside doing God knows what. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, right. It, was, it was a grind, you know. But um, lots of lots of oversight. Our staff, you know, shout out to them because they, you know, we were able to kind of impose our confidence on the staff and our ambition of where we want the organization right. to be. And they wanted to change lives and make impact. And that's what's really unique about Combine Academy is that's what we're able to do. So we saw this happening and we always dreamed. And at that point, so a few other things happened. We we saw a huge demand. We always have had a supply and demand issue. Currently, we have a couple hundred kids enrolled. We have over 250 on our waiting list oh, wow. to come to campus. Uh, we just don't have the inventory. And that's why fundraising is huge and bringing on new capital. But back then, we also had a waiting list. So we decided to open up in Atlanta Um, One of our third teammates at Clemson that was a a couple years above us, Matt Morris, um, great friend of ours. We brought him on board. Um, He's a minority owner in Combine. He's our vice president, and he owns all the real estate as well. And so brought him on board, and he started Combine Academy of Atlanta to basically take advantage of all this um, additional supply of demand. So basically, um, we, we created an Atlanta location, created an Orlando location, and had these different hubs working kind of the same way. Um, back in uh, 2016 and 17. Then in 17, our general manager, uh, Matt Williamson, he calls me and we've been looking for a campus for the longest, looking for land that we could develop a campus on, looking for some some land. Yeah, we acquired 22 acres in Mint Hill to develop a campus out. And it was going to be like a $7 million investment to develop this campus. And uh, right in the middle of due diligence on that, while we were in the process of closing on it, we found this campus. Matt Williamson did our general manager on LoopNet in Lincolnton. And it was a, a church that had gone basically out of business. It was vacant. It was uh, 43 acres at the time, uh, about 80,000 square feet at the time. 
And he calls me, he says, man, I think I just found it. It's on market for two and a half million dollars. Um, can't disclose some things, but yeah. we bought it for a fraction of that. After a bunch of due diligence and concessions, et cetera, we ended up still closing on the land in Mint Hill. It's the most valuable land that we own today. It's right in the heart of uh, Matthew's Mint Hill area, mm -hmm. 22 acres, unbelievable res residential application. But we also went and we bought this campus that had everything that we needed almost immediately. And uh, and that's where we're based today. Uh, we wow. got some SBA financing, um, renovated all the buildings we built. We've built, built several new structures on campus, brand new collegiate uh, level baseball field, brand new dormitory, renovated the cafeteria, um, and so it's it's become a, a special place for us to not have to drive <laughs> to all these different properties, dozens yeah. of properties, and then take <laughs> all those kids to a weight room in a different area and then all of them to class. Um, Did you, you know, retire the vans? The van, those <laughs> van, we've had some crazy van experiences, but whenever we jumped into our campus, uh, we bought all new vans, uh, okay. upgraded our fleet. And the great thing is kids wake up on campus. They walk, you know, it's, it's collegiate atmosphere. They walk to the cafe. They walk to the sports medicine room. They walk to the gym, the field, the academic center. It's uh, it's really neat. We'll take a tie. So we'll take a tie. In here in the soccer locker room. <laughs> I think we, we got a tie today. Yep. Yeah. No, don't listen to Jonah. We will not take a tie. We want to <laughs> win. We want to win. That's insane. It is insane. I kind of want to go. I'm excited <laughs> to see like, it now. Enroll. <laughs> <laughs> Might be too old, man. <laughs> We'd love to have you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Who's that dude with the full beard, like, <laughs> still getting dunked on? <laughs> this a couple a couple times during our conversation, um, and it's been a very constant thematic in all of these that we've shot. Um, it's building a team. You guys talk about building a team. We have it for um, J.B. Fitzgerald. You know, in the early stages, this is what it looked like. This is how we blossom. It's changed astronomically. So, can you can you talk a little bit about the importance of building that team? Um, and I guess, like, I'll get your thoughts on that first, Trevor. And then, Jonah, I want to know from you, like, the mindset that you had, especially running that team while Trevor was in the league. So, um, building a team, starting off, you know. You got to have somebody that you can trust to to head that team. And that's been Jonah. You know, he's been the head of, you know, every company that we own, um, majority of, um, because there's somebody, I feel comfortable with that because there's somebody that I know I can trust and I know nobody's going to work harder than him. So it starts with the the head person because the, the people that you hire under you, they got to see that work ethic. They got to see you in there grinding so they understand, you know. It's contagious. Yeah, it's contagious. And they understand, you know, what they, how much work they got to put in, you know, if they want to stick around. Right, right. So that, that all started with Jonah. So starting with the head of the snake, if you will, like it, it's, it's very important because it, it, set, it sets the tone for everything. And um, Jonah could, you know, talk more about the hiring because he's, you know, in the trenches more and, yeah. um, and he, he's, you know, doing most of the hiring, you know, right. up under him. So he could talk about that a little bit more. You said, what, 100 employees now? Yeah, it's close to 100, 100 on campus, and yeah. it, it fluctuates. Yeah. yeah, don't let that go over your head. <laughs> it's massive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, um, it, we need a lot of hands on deck up there. You know, yeah. we've got supplemental staff. You know, we've got, um, you know, our heads of school. We've got our department heads academically. We've got our cafeteria staff, all of our coaches, which makes up, you know, the bulk of that for those four different sports, um, postgraduate coaches. And we've also got ninth through 12th grade in high school. So um, then we've got our administrators, our, our just the security maintenance. It's a, uh, it's a whole operation with a lot of different uh, working parts, but, you know, building the team from jump, I think is, is probably the most exciting thing for me because I know that that's the way at which we were able to scale. And I had that vision and that mindset because, you know, I, I was really blessed with an opportunity to be able to, to walk on at Clemson as an invited walk on where I come from in Evansville, Indiana and the family I came from. I never thought I was going to be in front of people and be in, in front of a crowd and get to do these things and all that. I love basketball, but I really was able to finesse my way to Clemson, to be right. honest. And, um, you know, and then getting to Clemson, meeting Trevor, 
and seeing what Trevor was able to accomplish and just almost idolizing him before I got there and watching him as this just amazing athlete and person and celebrity was amazing. And so, you know, we get to Clemson and and I don't even think I realized that he was going to play in the NBA, even towards <laughs> me, neither. Even to, <laughs> literally like, like we, we weren't even like striving for that, talking about that, even in his like junior year, whenever he's on the mock draft, you know, yeah, it's you, just, tripped, you tripped into the first round, man. Yeah. <laughs> you already had me projected to go uh, 49th in the second round. And he wow, earned that, that summer, shit. That summer, I whooped ass. Man, like, we this had dude, workouts with different teams. Like I beat the shit out of people. That's when it that, became that's how real. I got to move up. That's when it became real. He would call me. You know, he was uh, flying around all these different NBA team workouts, and that's when it became real. He'd be like, "Hey, man, I just went up against so and so. I don't want to say names, but these are like lottery guys." And he's like, "Bro, I'm boom, boom, boom." And I'm like, "Hell yeah!" You know, that was really cool. But I don't think either of us really realized what that was going to do for us as a a unit and our families and all that. Um, and even after he got drafted, we didn't realize it, you know, mm -hmm. until a certain point and we, uh, you know, we were able to create business around it. But I, I say that to say, watching what he was able to accomplish, being alongside him, being at Clemson, it really gave me a ton of confidence. You know, um, my mother's death as well fueled the fuck out of all of this, you know? Yeah. So this is like, that was in my senior year of high school. You know, my mother passed actually, her birthday is today. So it's a special day for me today, but basically she passed in my senior year. And right after that, I was unsigned. I had only a couple offers, you know, Liberty and a few other schools that I didn't really want to go to. And my coach, John Jordan, finessed me into Clemson, attached me with a, a seven foot two Romanian guy. And I got in there and I got around Trevor and we got to experience that. And so my confidence just went crazy. And, you know, I don't, I'm not... I'm not a guy that should be signing autographs, but you guys know at the college level, <laughs> yeah, when I'm everyone else I'm is doing it. it, the kids just come up and you're not going to say, no, that's right, a dick right. move, right? Yeah. So <laughs> so I'm a, so doing all that, and I think just hearing like my coaches, you know, Shaka Smart, um, Oliver Purnell, Will Wade, all those guys, seeing their enthusiasm and like the way that they directed the troops, it taught me how to be that same authoritative leader and all that, and it, it gave me that confidence and seeing what he accomplished so you know, basically, whenever we got into business, I was like, fuck it, man. You know, we just played in the ACC, you know, Trevor's in the NBA, all this shit's coming together. Let's approach these endeavors with the same level of competence, uh, of confidence and ambition right. as what we had, you know, previously. And so I would get in interviews and just try to pour the ambition into these young men and women that joined our team and uh, let them know we're going to take it to the moon. You know, it's the it's point blank period. We can do it without you, but we'd love to do it with you. Jump on and this rocket ship. Exactly. Right. And that's how we were from like literally the first person we hired all the way up to the, you know, however many we got now. So they, uh, they, they, we, we try to infuse that ambition, that confidence of where we're going. And I, I genuinely believe that having that and possessing that and having that spirit around our companies is what's got everybody else, you know, waking up every morning, like, let's build this shit to the moon, change some lives, change our family and, and get it going. So. That's fire. I would be remiss not to mention this because, and I, I only thought of this because of um, what Trevor was saying about whooping ass over the summer. Um, Where are you going with this? <laughs> not there. Um, I'm from Cleveland. So there's this like amazing video of you on the internet that floats around and I see from time to time of, you know what I'm about to say. Get the huddle. <laughs> yeah, get in the huddle. And like, whose who's faces are in that? It's like Ty, Ty Lu, Jeffrey, yeah, LeBron. 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 LeBron didn't even like blink. But yeah, LeBron, LeBron wasn't amused at all. Well, he's, like, he's like, run the play. He still got to guard it. Yeah. <laughs> he said that? Yeah. For real? Ty Lu was like, oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, so take it, were you just clowning around or like what was going on? I just saw life? a hole in the huddle, so I'm walking up. I'm, I mean, if you want to invite me in, shit, I'm going to look at the play. <laughs> and he's in there drawing up a play, so I'm just like this, you know, getting the play. And then the players look up, Talu look up. He thought I was in one of their plays. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> did, you say, did you say something? I didn't like, say anything. He back and started talking to you. Nah, uh, I, yeah, I didn't say But he did like point my yeah, direction. Yeah. He's drawing up, he's like, you do this. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so he was kind of going up away from me. And then what was the game? There was an epic um, on this, on the note of notable um, Trevor Booker experiences. 
the, the like no look shot, right? Oh, that's oh, yeah. that's that's in like the base. That's in the the Hall of Fame. Uh, I see I see that floating on my Instagram all the time. Yeah, all yeah. It has time. like its anniversary. Like, yeah. oh, it's the three year anniversary since this this shot. <laughs> you practiced that, or was it just? Like, no, I didn't practice that particular shot. But I'm always you know practicing my touch different mm -hmm. from different angles. This is the, he's I'm, the best horse player I've ever <laughs> seen. Every you know yeah we we would be in our practice gym in college and all, he just you know like I said when I told y'all whenever we go into this he's gonna be clowning during this interview because he likes to keep it light but we'd be in the gym everybody's trying to keep it serious get their shots up and he's over there flipping the ball over his head <laughs> bouncing it off the wall like the guy on the other end of your hoop is probably like nah fuck this <laughs> we're not playing this guy <laughs> he's number one on the leaderboard well, because he invested no because he makes these shots that's what you say that's hilarious all right well let's let's see about wrapping this up and, and yeah. do our uh our uh well unless you guys have anything else that you want to bring up we've got we we like to wrap up each episode with one common question that i think you guys will vibe with um with some of the stuff that you guys shared off camera with us but do you guys have any other final words of stuff that you want to say before we try to break this down um i would um send out some advice that's where uh, we're going to, to these to these athletes you know not even the athletes but you know, well, the once athletes that were in high school and college, you know, and they no longer play basketball. But anybody, you know, just going into the workforce and work world, um, even entrepreneur life, it's, it's a certain, you know, they these guys, these guys that I'm talking to, and women too, uh, that love basketball, love sports, and they just don't know where to go after that. I would encourage you to put in that same work that you put in on the court, like off the court, you know, into whatever work you go into. You, you put, you know, I, I think a lot of people, they aspire to be NBA, WNBA, and they put that work in, you know, that tremendous work, you know, because they have dreams and that's where they want to go. But, you know, it, once they don't make it, they're like, okay, what do I do now? Um, you still can find something that you want to do that you love, um, even if you don't love it, you know, put in that work, that same work that you put in on the court and just watch how far that takes you. It's, 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 a, it's, it's beauty in the struggle. So it's, it, and when they say trust the process, it's because those details matter. You know, just seeing Jonah, the way he grinded, you know, with combine and everything that we do. Um, and, you know, you watch some other people, it's just handed to them, whether it's, you know, inheritance or whatever it is. But it's it's not the same experience, right? It, Being it, in know, the trenches, doing it, right? Because yeah. you learn so much stuff yeah. that you don't learn if it's just handed to you. But those little things that you learn go a long way, and 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 that's what sets you up for success. So I would just encourage you to put in that same work that you put in uh, on the court, mm -hmm. put in that same work off the court. I love that. I love that. I mean, people try to overcomplicate. Business. I mean, they try to complicate basketball too. There you know, there's so many parallels between sports um, and and business. It's mm -hmm. it's hard as hell. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's simple. The mm -hmm. the, the objective is simple. Um, so being able to attack it, I think is 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 great advice. Yeah. Um, but no, this was this was great, man. Um, you know, I learned a lot today. I know you probably did too, Alex. Um, but I appreciate you guys jumping in and and talking with us today about your business and. You know, just your life beyond the game of basketball. So, no, it's, it's been I'm ready to go see combine. <laughs> Let's go see combine. Back in the game, it's evident. Step in the room, I'm an elephant. Trying to go look at the shot. It's your fault. You should have done it. What's going on? Oh my god, you're <laughs> what you guys got there? What you guys got? Little old catfish. Give me that catfish. The lighting. 
I'm on y'all in town. <laughs>